Hi, everybody. We're going to take a look today at some problems having to do with genetics. And these are Mendelian genetics. And Mendelian genetics are named after this guy, Gregor Mendel, who you guys know all about. And they're simple genetics that work for simple organisms. Just so you know, in real life, genetics is a lot more complicated than it is with garden peas. So keep all this stuff in mind, uh, take it with a grain of salt, and know that real life genetics is a little bit more complex than the kind of genetics you might learn in your science class, which is right here. But you gotta learn this stuff first before you can understand the more complicated stuff. So we're gonna start with number one, a black coat is dominant over a white coat in guinea pigs. So dominant, as you guys know, is always shown with capital letters. So what we're going to do is we're going to make black coat big B. White coat is going to be little b. A homozygous black pig is mated with another homozygous black pig. Homozygous means two of the same letters. So big B, big B is homozygous, and black is the dominant trait. That's why we used capital Bs. The other parent is also homozygous and black, which is dominant. The genotype of each of the parents is the same, big B, big B. Now comes the fun part. We're going to plug this into a Punnett square. Big B, big B, mates with big B, big B, and these are the babies you get. There's only one combination of letters that the baby guinea pigs can get, and that's big B, big B, which is the only genotype. And you might remember that big, big, big B stands for black. So... The question down here, what is the probability that white offspring will be produced, is kind of a trick. Because 0% of the babies are white. You can see that by looking up there. They're 100% black babies. Now we're going to do something a little bit more complicated. Let's use a different color pen. All right. A heterozygous black pig is mated with a homozygous black pig. Remember that heterozygous means two different sized letters. Hetero means different or not the same. So a heterozygous black pig would be big B, little b. See, those letters are not the same. A homozygous black pig, homo means the same, so that means that both of the letters are going to be the same, and in this case, they're both big B for black. The genotypes of the parents are big B, little b, and little, uh, sorry, big B, big B. Just so you guys know that X there, that refers to cross, and so you use that when you do genetic crosses. Okay, let's do a Punnett square now. We've got big B, little b, crossed with big B, big B. And these are the babies. Big B, big B, big B, little b, big B, big B, big B, little b. So we've got two genotypes. And the ones that are big B, big B are black. And in this case, the big B here is dominant. That means it's stronger than the little b, which is recessive. So that means this baby pig is going to be black too. All right. So um, it says work the problem and show the possible genotypes and phenotypes of the offspring and probabilities of each. 50% of the babies are going to be big B, big B, and 50% of the babies are going to be big B, little b, but 100% are going to appear black. 
All right. Hi again. Let's take a look at number three. I'm going to do this one in green. All right. So the important information here is that one of the parents is a black pig and one of the parents is a white pig. That means that the black pig is either genotype big B, big B, or big B, little b. And the white pig can only be little b, little b. The F1 generation is just what happens when you make a cross. So don't get totally distracted by that term. It's just a biology thing. But the babies are five black and five white. That means that you have 50% of your babies being black and 50 are white. Keep in mind that these are phenotypes. Okay, so we want to find out the genotypes of the parents. So let's try making a couple of Punnett squares. Let's do them down here where it's easier to see. All right, if one of the parents is big B, big B, and one of the parents is little b, little b, what's going to happen? Every single one of the babies will be big B, little b, heterozygous. And 100% of them will be black. But that's not the case. Because in the problem, it says that 50% are black and 50% are white. So let's try this again. What if one of the parents is big B, little b, and the other parent is little b, little b? I'll bet this is going to give us 50% black and 50% white babies. What? What? That's it. 50% are white, 50% are black. Therefore, the parents are big B, little b, and little b, little b. Here's the answer. All right, let's get another color. Let's try red for this last problem. Two heterozygous black pigs are mated. Heterozygous means two different letter sizes, and they're both black, big B, little b. So we're going to show the genotypes, phenotypes, and probabilities of the offspring. Offspring is such a fancy word, but it just means babies. Okay, the genotypes of the parents is easy because there's two of them and they're both heterozygous. So big B, little b, and big B, little b. Here we go. These are the babies. Big B, big B, big B, little b, big B, little b, little b, little b. So there are three different genotypes. Okay. These babies are black, and that's 25%. I just get that because just one of them is big B, big B. These, whoa, sorry guys. These babies are also black. Oops, sorry. And that's 50%. And then this one here is white. And that's 25%. Woohoo! It looks like we just answered the question. That's awesome. Now let's go to the next page. This time we're doing Holstein cattle. Those are those cool black and white spotted cows. Let's see. Let's use purple this time. So in Holstein cattle, the spotting of the coat is recessive to solid color coat. All right, so let's make, let's use the letter S. So spotting is recessive. Spots equals lowercase s. And solid is dominant. So solid is big S. What types of offspring can be produced by a cross between two spotted animals? All right, well, we know that spotted animals can only be little s. 
because it's recessive. So the only way you're going to have spots is if you have two recessive genes. So we're going to put these little S's here. And look, you guys, they're little tiny gals with little tiny S's. So they have little tiny spots. It's the only phenotype they can have. So 100% of them will be spotted. Isn't this easy? Genetics is actually kind of fun. I like it. All right, let's try red for this next one. In peas, long stem capital A is dominant. Okay, so long stem is capital A, short stem is lowercase a. Give the expected genotypes, phenotypes, and the probabilities for the following crosses. Homozygous long, so that's big A, big A, versus short, little a, little a. Here we go. All right. Looks like 100% of them are big A, little a, and they're long. That is 100%. Remember, we're giving genotype, phenotype, and probability. All right. Heterozygous long means big A, little a. And short is still little a, little a, because a is recessive. So here we go. Big A, little a, little a, little a. Big A, little a, big A, little a. Ooh, look. Two of those offspring are short. And two of them are long. So we have two possible genotypes. These ones are long. These ones are short. And each of them makes up 50%. All right, last one. Heterozygous long. That's big A, little a. And homozygous long. Homozygous, remember, means two of the same letters because homo means the same. So we're going to have big A, little a, with big A, big A. So it looks like Look at that, you guys. We have two possible genotypes, but these guys are long, these guys are long, so 100% of the offspring will be long. And there we go. Those are Punnett squares. The more you do, the better you get at them, and they're actually kind of fun. There'll be a video you guys will watch pretty soon that talks about how um, how you can put more than two traits on them at, on a Punnett square at once, which is pretty fun to look at too. All right, I hope this was helpful.